In this video, we'll cover what TCP IP is, what the TCP IP model is, and how it compares to the OSI model. First and foremost, TCP IP stands for Transmission Control Protocol, Internet Protocol. So it's actually two acronyms stuck together to make an even more fancier acronym, but it's really the name for a bunch of protocols that are used to connect devices on the internet. And a protocol is really just a set of rules that data has to follow. Not only does TCP IP make up the backbone of the internet, but it provides a way to communicate between different hardware and software systems. And that's key to understand. The TCP IP model is a framework and it divides the process of sending and receiving data into four layers which can help people understand each protocol and how they interact with each other. This is what the TCP IP model looks like. So if you Google this, you'll probably find images similar to this. It's also called the TCP IP stack, but they're the same thing. TCP IP is like the rules of the road, but for data on the internet. Systems need to follow these rules in order to send and receive data successfully. The TCP IP model is made up of layers and these layers build upon each other. Each layer handles a different part of sending and receiving data. So the layers are from top to bottom, application, transport, internet, and network interface. Confusingly, the internet layer is sometimes called the network layer. This is because people confuse it with the name for the OSI model layer. Even more confusingly, the network interface layer is also sometimes called the link layer. And that's because the internet engineering task force, which I think is a hilarious name for an organization, by the way, released a document called RFC 1122, which referred to this layer as the link layer. I don't know why they did that. They may have just wanted to confuse everyone, but the original model was created by the US Department of Defense, and they use the terms application, transport, internet, and network interface. So those are the names that I tend to stick with. A good way to remember this is through the phrase, all tech is necessary. So that's again, from top to bottom, application, transport, internet, network interface. So getting into the layers, application sits at the top of the model. And this is the layer where web browsers, and email clients access the network services. So this is where protocols like HTTP, SMTP, and FTP sit. Then there's the transport layer, and this handles the reliability part of the data. And this is where TCP and UDP are used. The internet or network layer is primarily used for routing. So that's sending packets across different networks. This is where IP addresses come in. This is also where ICMP and other routing protocols like OSPF happen. The network interface or link layer is the layer that interfaces with the network hardware like Ethernet or Wi-Fi. So data always flows from the top to the bottom of the system doing the sending and from the bottom to the top of the system receiving the data. You probably already know the OSI model. Um, this is just another framework for network protocols, but instead of having four layers, there's seven. Um, personally, I think the TCP model is more practical for network troubleshooting, and it's just a more realistic framework for real world application. But the OSI might be important to learn if you're looking for a fully comprehensive understanding of all networking protocols, not just the ones involved in the internet. Let's break down the journey of data using the TCP IP model. The starting point is at the application layer. And this is, as I said before, this is where you interact with an application that needs to send data over the network. So sending an email or opening a web page or streaming a YouTube video. This application layer prepares the data for the layer below, the transport layer. And this process is known as encapsulation. So the transport layer divides the data into pieces called segments and assigns a source and destination port to these segments. The internet layer is where IP addresses come in. So the segments are packaged into packets and they're assigned source and destination IP addresses. This allows the router to direct packets to other routers. Then there's the network interface layer. So the packets here are turned into frames. They become zeros and ones and they're transmitted over a physical network. After this happens, the data travels across the internet, usually through multiple routers before it reaches its destination. And then the process happens in reverse. So the data is de-encapsulated all the way up to the application layer. So to summarize the TCP IP model, there are four layers. Each layer has a specific function. You can remember them with the phrase, all tech is needed. Data is encapsulated from top to bottom. Now I prefer to use the TCP model over the OSI. It's also important to note that multiple protocols can operate within each layer at the same time. So if you were using a web browser, you're going to a website, you're probably using HTTP and DNS at least. Those are two protocols in the same layer. 
which is fine. It's also important to note that not all protocols fit easily into the TCP IP model, while they do in the OSI model, because there's more layers. So something like SSL or TLS could be seen as fitting in between the application and transport layer. That's why sometimes the TCP IP can be split into five layers, but there's really only four. As always, if you have any questions or feedback or would just like to chat, feel free to reach out. Thanks for watching.